Time and again, archaeologists around the world discover artifacts that challenge our notions regarding the ways of life of now-vanished cultures. It's not uncommon for history books to be rewritten because of a single discovery. Even today, such objects are found that make historians wonder with excitement. The 10 most exhilarating artifacts found in recent years are presented in this video. Are you fascinated by mysterious things and archaeological discoveries? Then show us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Hidden Worlds, and join us on our journey. The Carnix, a wind instrument of the Celts Between 300 BC and 200 AD, the Celts of the Iron Age went into battle with a fearsome instrument. The so-called Carnix was a wind instrument that was carried upright. At the upper end sat the head of a dangerous animal, such as a wild boar, a snake, or a dragon. From its wide open mouth came a sound that spread over the heads of their enemies. Although we will never know what a Carnix sounded like, contemporary sources describe it as harsh and gloomy. This was thought to lower the morale of enemy troops. Although the Carnix is mentioned in many reports and accounts from that period, only parts of five instruments had been found by 2004. In that same year, archaeologists finally managed to unearth a larger haul of Iron Age artifacts, which included seven well-preserved carniques. The mouthpiece of one carnix from France suggested that it was played horizontally rather than vertically. Historians now assume that it was used not only in warfare, but also in festivals, weddings, and other rituals. A 2,600-year-old wine factory in Lebanon in September 2020, archaeologists in Lebanon made a groundbreaking discovery. In addition to four houses, the oldest Phoenician wine press was discovered in a Phoenician village dating back to the 7th century BC. In a basin that held 4,500 litres of liquid, the remains of wine production were still found in the form of dried seeds. Although the Phoenicians did not invent wine pressing, they cultivated and produced it in the Mediterranean. The seafaring people recognized the climate favorable for viticulture in North Africa, Sicily, and Spain, and spread the tradition throughout their colonies. They loved their wine so much that they even used it in religious rituals. Because bottles were not yet invented, wine was stored in amphorae. In this form, the Phoenicians traded their wine with other cultures. Traces of Tobacco in Maya Pottery the Mayan culture of South America is known for its highly advanced technology and science. Therefore, newly found artifacts from this period are always examined particularly closely. Inscribed ceramic vessels are often found, but the inscriptions do not always match the actual contents. This is because some vessels were used for multiple purposes, and the contents of others have become too distorted over the centuries by bacteria or chemical reactions. Using state-of-the-art techniques, researchers at the University of Albany have now succeeded in detecting nicotine in a ceramic vessel that was intended for storing tobacco leaves. Since nicotine is an ingredient in tobacco, it's now clearly understood that the Maya people were already enjoying its uses over 1,300 years ago. Previously, only once had it been possible to unmistakably prove the written contents of a Mayan jar. During the investigation in 1989, traces of cocoa were found. Mathematical Secrets of the Ancient Merchants In our modern world, we are used to measuring objects in liters, meters or kilograms. Only today do we know that the Egyptian Empire used a similar standard of units as early as 3,000 years ago. Researchers at Tel Aviv University have uncovered this fact by using perfectly round pots. Mathematicians were able to calculate that the spherical containers held exactly one whole or half hecat. This ancient Egyptian unit is equivalent to about 4.8 liters. In these vessels, liquids or powders could be precisely measured for trade. Merchants found out how large the volume of the container was by simply measuring the circumference. Similar vessels, equally capable of holding a full number of Hecat, suggest that the Egyptian system was also used by the Phoenicians and throughout the Mediterranean. Only the expansion of the Assyrian Empire led to the end of these sophisticated units of measurement. The Stone Statue from Tel Tayanat At the southernmost tip of Turkey lies the archaeological site of Tel Tayanat. It's believed that the building parts found there belong to the ancient city of Kunulua, 
This was once the capital of a kingdom of the Hittites, who were native to Asia Minor in the second millennium BC. The excavation site was left dormant for almost 80 years. It was not until the 2000s that archaeologists returned to Tel Tayanot and uncovered some amazing artifacts. The most unusual object found is a detailed statue depicting a bearded man. Only the upper part of the body has survived to this day, but the entire statue would have been nearly 4 meters tall. The bearded face with lifelike eyes is attributed to the Hittite deity Sapaliliuma. It's believed that the statue was either used in religious rituals or served as a burial object for wealthy residents of the Hittite Empire. Polynesian Weapons Made From Shark Teeth In the middle of the Pacific Ocean lie the Gilbert Islands, which belong to Kiribati. When their inhabitants once waged war, they had to build weapons from the meager materials of the island. There was no metal available, but large quantities of discarded shark teeth were washed ashore. The inhabitants of the Gilbert Islands sewed these onto wooden spears using coconut fibers or human hair. 124 such razor-sharp spears were found by researchers in the 19th century and were stored unnoticed in museums for nearly 200 years. When biologists took a closer look at the teeth on the spears, remarkable things came to light. The inhabitants of the islands used teeth from up to 17 different shark species. Interestingly, two of these species, the black shark and the spot tooth shark, were not previously known to be native to anywhere near Kiribati. Without these spears, biologists would not have known that these two species once had a much larger migratory range. What drove the black shark and the spot tooth shark out of Kiribati waters is not completely understood. Whatever the reason, it's likely that humans are also responsible for their disappearance. Oldest Evidence of Cheese Making The recipe for cheese is simple. Take warm milk, add rennet or lactic acid bacteria, and after cooling, only the whey needs to be removed. But who was the original cheese maker? Inconspicuous ceramic sieves found in Poland are proof that people were making cheese 7,000 years ago. This was confirmed when traces of milk fat were found in containers. Dairy products were an important source of protein for Neolithic people. They provided food without having to slaughter valuable livestock. The steady supply of milk was a significant step in the sedentarization of man. Cheese offers two other decisive advantages. First, it has a longer shelf life and is easier to transport than milk. Second, in the Neolithic period, almost all Europeans were unable to digest lactose but cheese making removes most of it, making it easier to digest. 30,000-year-old artifacts from the Chinese Stone Age Two artifacts have been found in China to which archaeologists attribute an incredible age of 30,000 years. One of these artifacts is a stone with engraved lines, making it the first object of its kind recognized as being from the Chinese Stone Age. The eight straight lines on the stone are clearly visible, even to the naked eye. Analysis has shown that they are not the result of animal activity or natural phenomena. They must have been deliberately engraved by humans. Whether these lines were used for counting or represent primitive writing remains to be uncovered. Beads made from the shells of ostrich eggs were also found at the same site. These large ratites once lived not only in Africa, but also in large parts of Eurasia. Who was responsible for these discoveries has not yet been clarified. Both the indigenous people of China and nomads who moved to the area from the west come into question. The Oldest Human Steps Outside Africa What was once a small step for a human from the Arabian Peninsula caused a sensation among experts after its discovery in 2017. Namely, among the sand dunes of Saudi Arabia, scientists found the first footprints of a human outside of Africa. The inconspicuous depressions on the dry desert ground can be dated back 120,000 years and provide clues as to when the first representatives of Homo sapiens left their home continent of Africa. What exactly these people look like or how they lived unfortunately remains a matter of speculation. What can be said for sure, however, is that footprints of elephants, camels and buffaloes have been found in the same place. Together with our earliest ancestors, they likely gathered at this spot to drink water at the nearby lake. Over 10,000 relics in a Chinese riverbed To find the last artifacts on our list, a riverbed was completely drained. 
This effort proved to be highly rewarding for the archaeologists involved. More than 10,000 artifacts were recovered from the site near the Chinese city of Chengdu. The large number of objects can be explained by the fact that a bloody battle once took place here and heralded the end of the Ming Dynasty. The most significant artifact in this huge treasure was a royal seal, which lay broken into four pieces in the riverbed. The object, about 10 centimeters tall, was made of pure gold and decorated with a handle in the shape of a turtle. The inscription says that the seal belonged to a prince. Although it's not clear which heir to the throne is alluded to, it can be assumed that he belonged to the imperial family towards the end of the Ming Dynasty. In the early 17th century, their rule came to an end and was replaced by the Qing Dynasty. Precisely which prince the owner of the gold seal was is what Chinese historians are now trying to find out. Over the centuries, places have sprung up all over the world that, for one reason or another, have been forgotten over time. Many are associated with a long history and yet today are no longer populated by people or are simply no longer useful. At the same time, it's in such places that nature reclaims what man once took. The following places are examples of where humans once thrived, but now an eerie silence is all that remains. Herschel Island At the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries, whaling was an important industry in many nations of the world, but especially near the Arctic. In Canada, one of the most vital centers of this industry was found on Herschel Island. It was an important industrial center where whales were processed and also where whaling expeditions began. Then, quite suddenly around 1910, whaling lost its significance and people left the island. As the ocean slowly reabsorbs parts of the island along with the forgotten architecture, it's become a biotope for wild birds and for flora and fauna, an example of nature taking something back from humans. Now, however, it's climate change that threatens the island, a threat to irretrievably destroy a unique piece of human history. Kamilisos, Kayaku In the area of today's Turkey and Greece, there are many small towns that played an important role in ancient times and in some cases even in the early Middle Ages. Kamilisos, or Kayaku in Turkish, has a particularly tragic history. The former Greek settlement was an important port and was initially almost completely destroyed by an earthquake. After the city passed through the hands of various rulers, it was the ongoing conflicts between the Turks and the Greeks in the 19th century that ensured that the city's population was almost completely displaced. Today, Kayaku is a ghost town, open only to tourists, where you can still admire the former churches, Greek houses and ruins from ancient times. Glen Park On the outskirts of Estonia's capital Tallinn are the remains of an ambitious project led by Nikolai von Glen, an eccentric landowner who wanted his own little kingdom. He had an impressive castle, a garden and various other structures erected, which still attract tourists from the surrounding areas. Unfortunately, since the castle was looted during the First World War, nothing remains of the interior adornments, which is said to have been designed by Nikolai himself. Instead, some curious statues can be found in the adjacent park. A devil and a dragon, created from stone and other materials, keep a close eye on visitors who wander around. No official records of the estate have survived, and so it remains a small mystery in the middle of Estonia. St. Mary's Tower Standing lonely on one of the coastal stretches of Malta, St. Mary's Watchtower has held an important meaning for the island and for the vessels along the coast of Malta for many centuries. It was built in the middle of the 17th century, and its main purpose was to protect the small islands around Malta, as there were frequent attacks by pirates on essential merchant vessels. Over the centuries, the tower, which could be seen from the horizon and is an important landmark in the region, also served as a hospital, a prison and a shelter for spies in one of the countless wars fought around Malta. It wasn't until the 21st century that the tower was abandoned and given to a charitable organization. It takes care of preserving this vital piece of history and informs visitors about why this tower and others had such a crucial role in the development of the island. Kachari Ruins 
In the Middle Ages, there was a multitude of small and large kingdoms in India, which naturally wanted to signify their power through temples, palaces, and other monuments. Even today, little is known about these kingdoms, as what remained has decayed over the course of time. An example of this are the strange ruins of the defunct Kachari Empire. Sometime in the 18th century, the kingdom was invaded and occupied, and all that endured of the state's mighty temple were some strange monuments that can still be seen today. The collection of mushroom-like pillars was partially forgotten for centuries and was only recently reopened to tourism. There is also a theory that these ruins are much older than the kingdom that gave them their name. Unfortunately, since their condition is so degraded and only a few remain, the search for clues continues and it may be years before the mystery is solved. Fortuna Air Force Station Fortuna Air Force Station is another example of how nature reclaims its territory if left abandoned. Built in the early 1950s, it served as a radar station searching for unidentified aircraft until the late 1970s. When it was no longer needed, rights to the land were sold several times over, and the buildings were left to deteriorate. In the search for usable parts, many of the buildings were destroyed, and now only the old radar station and some smaller buildings remain. Over 40 years later, trees and grass cover the base and serve as a popular destination for adventurers keen to take a look for themselves. Cimitero dai Bucci The Burci was a kind of wooden ferry that moved goods and people between Venice and the surrounding lagoons. This was a tradition that lasted deep into the 20th century. By the 1970s, however, new and more effective ways had developed and many of the old burci were left to rot, half submerged in the rivers and lagoons. They quickly became a place for plants and animals to thrive, and today the burci cemetery is part of a walking tour that leads from Venice towards Treviso. Tourists are invited from all over the world to see this sunken graveyard. Bedrock City in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, The Flintstones was a popular cartoon and comic series that delighted young and old viewers alike. Fittingly, Arizona in the US had not one but several theme parks that took the Stone Age family as their model for fun and entertainment. Located in the middle of the desert, the roadside amusement park had a wide variety of rides and restaurants that embraced The Flintstones theme. However, when the owner of the park retired and no buyer could be found to keep it going, the park was abandoned. Today, you can still see a lot of the former attractions in the middle of the desert, including dinosaurs and the house of Fred Flintstone. Now, a new owner has taken over, and what little remains of Bedrock City will be replaced by Raptors Ranch. Villa Mehu the Finnish dancer Elis Sinisto had a wonderful idea. Instead of placing another structure in Finnish nature that had to be built from expensive materials, he wanted to create a home for himself and for guests that could be made solely from materials that were recycled. And so, the Villa Mehu came into being, which is actually a patchwork quilt of different buildings and accommodations, and in fact relies solely on materials that have been taken from recycling. A building with several floors, a sauna, accommodations for guests, and a community house with a dance hall were created on the property. After the dancer's death, the property was sealed off, and to this day it's not entirely clear who is now in charge. Regardless, one can still observe how the returning nature blends perfectly with the recyclable materials, and makes it almost seem as if this was the intended purpose all along. Vern High Angle Battery the Verne High Angle Battery is a former gun battery on the British island of Dorset that dates back to the 18th century. On the one hand, this military structure was intended to protect the island from a possible invasion, and on the other, it was an important bulwark in the defense of the sea routes of the British Isles. However, since the beginning of the 20th century, the battery was abandoned as technical progress was simply too fast and thus its strategic importance was no longer worthwhile. Since then, nature has flooded back and set about nesting in the man-made structures. Today, it's a major tourist attraction on the island and not only provides a good insight into the military infrastructure of the time, but also blends in beautifully with the landscapes of the Dorset coast. Village Disappeared 
On the Shetland Islands in northern Scotland, an entire village disappeared under a thick layer of sand about 300 years ago. But how could that be? Well, the north of Scotland is rough, and there is indeed a large amount of sand on the beaches of the small islands. But a whole village in the interior of the island simply buried under sand? It didn't make sense to researchers for a long time. The village of Brew, together with two other villages, was the only settlement on this comparatively small part of Shetland. To this day, the area is inhospitable, but nevertheless, people have been living on Shetland for more than 2,000 years. When the Little Ice Age broke out 300 years ago, the climate changed dramatically, even in the far north. Gigantic storms whipped large quantities of water ashore and stirred up the sand. Using certain calculations and a giant fan, researchers have now been able to recreate the process. In fact, strong winds can easily move several dozen cubic meters of sand at this location. It suggested that an overpopulation of rabbits and sheep was likely to blame. They had destroyed all the tall grass and bushes in the coastal section of land. Natural shelter was lacking, and the small village was at the mercy of storms. Brew likely did not disappear under the sand overnight, rather the layers of sand piled up over a long period of time, so villagers were able to get to safety at other locations. Manolo Paz's Many Years in Spain Have you heard of the Spanish Stonehenge? On Spain's Atlantic coast at the far northwestern tip of the country stand 12 Meniers, also known as Family Meniers or Peace Meniers. But in fact, the history of the arrangement does not go back quite as far as that as the fabled Stonehenge. The modern arrangement was installed by an artist only in 1994. Manolo Paz takes inspiration from sacred stone buildings of the past and then does his own thing with them. The huge boulders are between 2 and 4 meters high, and all of them have a peephole. The artist wanted to create with his many years a place of meditation and connection of the old with the new. I wonder if archaeologists will excavate the site 1,000 years from now and wonder why we built it. Multiculturalism 2,000 years ago The seaport of Berenice was a flourishing trade center in ancient times. Originally built by Ptolemies to import war elephants from faraway India, the port later became a transshipment point for art and consumer goods from all over the world. A team of Polish and American archaeologists have now excavated a temple in the long-dead city, and what they found there did not fit at all into the picture of Egyptian history known so far. In the Temple of Serapis and Isis, both deities for health and fertility, researchers found sculptures that were around 2,000 years old and came from all sorts of regions around the world. Among them was a Buddhist figure from the Gandhara region between Pakistan and Afghanistan. One figure depicts the Nubian deity Sebu Meke and other sculptures of other gods from faraway Sudan. In the House of Serapis and Isis, therefore, neither racial hatred nor religious separation was practiced. Here, deities from all different parts of the world joined in an early multi-religious gathering. A Shipwreck Full of Gold Diamond prospectors discovered a shipwreck completely buried under sand on the skeleton coast of Namibia. The Bom Jesus had sunk at this spot about 500 years ago, but the real sensation was the cargo of the Portuguese ship, hundreds of gold coins worth about $13 million. The ship was only found because treasure hunters had drained an entire bay. But who gets the gold now? Although the ship belonged to the King of Portugal at the time and is therefore actually Portuguese state property today, the Portuguese renounced the treasure and generously left it to the government of Namibia. Ancient Gears or Cult Objects For about a century, thousands of gears have been found in Orange County, Southern California. The 2.5 to 15 cm wide wheels lie scattered in fields or are recovered in large numbers during construction work. But what were the objects used for? Researchers attribute them to the Millingstone Horizon culture, which lived 2,500 to 7,500 years ago in what is now Southern California. There are four to seven variations of the gear stones – flat, grilled, pierced and without a hole. The number of these prongs ranges from 1 to 22, with most having 10 to 17 prongs. The stones are geometrically perfect and made of different raw materials such as red ochre, shale, sandstone, basalt or granite. Presumably the different stone types and shapes belong to certain clans. 
Interestingly, the pieces are found almost entirely near sea cliffs or coastal hills. Although the epoch was named after the advent of milling stones technology, researchers rule out that the small stones are pieces of an early expertise. Rather, they see in the jagged stones cult objects or possibly parts of a game. Tullymonstrum Fossil The Tully Monstrum was named after its discoverer, the amateur researcher Francis Tully. He found numerous skeletons of the bizarre creatures in a former coal mine in the U.S. state of Illinois. They were about 30 to 40 centimeters long and, interestingly, were found only in this one place. The Tully Monstrum gregarium is a strange hybrid of a diamond-shaped fish and a snake. The mouth resembles a grasping arm studded with sharp teeth. But the most bizarre thing about this animal was certainly its eyes. They sat on the outside of a horizontal rod, which looked mounted to its back. It really doesn't get any stranger than this. For a long time, scientists could not assign the unusual creature, which lived about 307 million years ago, to any known species or genus. Now, however, they have found out that the Tully Monstrum was a vertebrate and is related to today's lampreys. The Man Who Found Forest Fen's Treasure the U.S. millionaire Forrest Fenn was an eccentric man who buried part of his fortune as treasure in 2010 and called for a nationwide treasure hunt. He wanted to ensure that his fellow man could experience the thrill of the hunt. As a hint, Fenn published an enigmatic poem several paragraphs long and at times gave further hints in the media. The treasure hunt lasted until June 2020, when an initially anonymous person finally lifted the chest of coins and jewelry worth about $2 million. It was only a few weeks and a lawsuit in a US court later that the discoverer was finally forced to reveal his identity. The lucky man was a 32-year-old medical student from Michigan who, in his own words, had studied Fenn's personality rather than his poem to get to the treasure's location. In doing so, he accomplished what 250,000 others before him had not. Forrest Fenn's treasure hunt brought about the deaths of four people. The millionaire himself died shortly after in September 2020 at the age of 90. The oldest emoji in the world In July 2020, archaeologists discovered what is believed to be the oldest emoji in the world. It was unearthed in an ancient Hittite city in what is now eastern Turkey. The Hittites once ruled over an empire that stretched from modern-day Greece and Egypt across Turkey to Syria, and perhaps they invented the emotional expression in stroke and dot form. In any case, the pot vase, which luckily contained a sweet sherbet, bears a smiling face made of two dots and a curved dash. Coincidence? No, say archaeologists, as the drawing was clearly painted on. The Hittite smiley, which is around 3,700 years old, thus replaced the previous record holder from Slovakia. Here in 1635, a lawyer had scribbled a smiley emoji on a legal document. Strange Insect I wager you've never seen such an insect before. Even the experts are struggling with the identification of this strange bunk. Indian forestry official Parveen Kaswan posted photos and videos of the creature on Twitter in March 2020, and so far the correct name has yet to be announced. What is it? wrote Parveen to his 44-second clip, receiving thousands of clicks, likes and ideas within hours. Indeed, the walking skeleton looks like a bizarre mix of a bony dragon, a stick insect and a praying mantis. But it's not just the appearance that's surprising. The mass of thin segments moves forward so laboriously that even a snail would pass by in a hurry. Of course, if you know what this bizarre animal is called, we'd love to see it in the comments. Fighter Planes Under the Sand In the summer, informal reports overflowed the net. The Americans allegedly recovered several Russian fighter jets with highly explosive technology on board from the desert sands of Iraq. Russia is said to have supplied these to the dictator Saddam Hussein during the Iraq War. Conspiracy theorists sense secrecy and a still smoldering dispute between the bosom enemies Russia and the USA. But only a few weeks later came the denials and corrections. The Russian fighters, which included types of legendary MiG-25 Foxbat, had been slumbering in the hot desert sand for a bit longer. In fact, in 1979, at the height of the Cold War, the Soviets sent them to Iraq and hid them there in case of an emergency. 
Instead of highly explosive technology, this find is more like war scrap or oversized souvenirs of the Cold War. By the way, the planes were found when international weapons experts were searching for Saddam Hussein's alleged weapons of mass destruction, and they have not yet been found. That's it. 10 more exciting, rare and bizarre discoveries worldwide. Let us know which discovery surprised you the most. Would you like to have participated in the search of Forest Fen's treasure? As always, we welcome your comments and ideas on the topic.